Assalamu alaikum welcome to SBR revision series for September 2021 today we are going to cover IS7 which is your statement of cash flows so our focus will be more on the group statement of cash flows okay and this standard is very important especially for your question number 1 of SBR which is for 30 marks because that question is on group accounting so you can get a cash flow statements also in under group accounting right so let's start overview of is7 what is the format you should know the format also of the statement of cash flow cash generated from operation this is very important yes investing and financing activities are also important but cash generated from operation operating activities is very important because that we have different methods of calculating it direct versus indirect accusation and disposal this is related to group accounting not individual okay when you acquire a subsidiary when you dispose a subsidiary what is the impact on the statement of cash flow dividends from associates dividends paid to nci okay so let us start statement of cash flow so the main purpose of this statement is for three things to assess liquidity solvency and financial adaptability of a business okay see liquidity is for a short term and solvency is a long term measure okay how solvent you are financially over a long period of time liquidity is for short term are you able to pay your debts on time the short term debts and all okay and financial adaptability so if a question asks you assess the liquidity or solvency or financial adaptability of a business that means you have to use statement of cash flow okay through that only you will be able to know it so cash consists of you should understand the definition of this there has been a question on this whether they have given you uh, some three transaction has been given three items has been given and the question was whether you can take it as cash or cash equivalent right i don't remember the exact past paper but in a revision kit questions when i was solving it maybe you will get it there in my revision uh, kit playlist the question was there so cash consists of cash in hand and deposits repayable upon demand less overdraft overdraft you have to deduct from cash in hand this includes cash held in a foreign currency also okay cash equivalent so cash we know cash equivalent means what short term highly liquid investments highly liquid means you can convert into cash very easily and they are usually short term okay short term means uh, some of the textbooks define short term as 3 months or less than 3 months it is considered as short term that you can readily convert to cash and the risk is very insignificant okay the risk of the changes in value so from your exam kit questions for is7 these are the questions moyes and jokert this also i have covered right i have covered this uh, two questions now let us go to the format of the statement of cash flow very important so is7 says this statement is split into three sections operating investing financing and you should know what things comes under which category okay some items can come in more than one places there you can write according to your choice but most of the time it is fixed operating will go for operating investing activities will go will go under investing financing activities will go under financing now in the sbr exam you may be asked to produce extracts from a consolidated statement of cash flow remember sbr exam will never ask you to prepare a full consolidated statement of cash flow that's a good thing only extracts and you have to explain also not just calculation is7 does not mean just calculation 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 most of the time it's more of writing than calculations right then so this is the format of is7 very careful go through the order the way it is presented the what is deducted what is deducted added under which category you have to say this so we are starting with operating activities before that you have to write a title for it make sure that you start with a title even if it's extract you have to write it that this is extract so here it's a full group statement of cash flow which i am showing you as an example as a demo to see the format right DEF group statement of cash flow for the year ended 31st December 2006. You have to write the year also. You have to write whose group statement is it, name of the company. You have to write it its group. If you are writing extract, you have to write group uh, statement of cash flows extract. So we are starting with cash flows from operating activities. This is the topic, the sub heading. We start with profit before tax. Okay, this is an indirect method. There are two methods: direct versus indirect. 
and this direct versus indirect only has an impact on the cash flow from operating activity other two activities will be same under both the methods so that's why focus is uh, paid uh, attention is more on operating activity because you start your statement of cash flow from this you start with profit before tax now you're converting your profit to cash first okay so the starting point is profit before tax with that we do some adjustments please make sure that you go through these adjustments very carefully because students make lots of mistakes here they omit some of the mistake uh, adjustments they think it's not relevant they include some adjustments which are not relevant which should not be included okay so adjustments like depreciation is added back non cash expense remember you have to write reasons i have come across a question in the revision kit only where they asked for the adjustments you have to calculate as well as explain also so when you are adding back depreciation you have to explain them why you are adding back the depreciation you have to know the logic also behind this okay don't just memorize the format so depreciation you are adding back because it's a non cash item impairment is also same same reason adding back expenses you add back gain you are deducting profit deducting profit on sale you see profit you are deducting or on sale of non current asset because profit expenses these are non cash items these are not having an impact on a cash flow share of associate profit this is a group statement of cash flow so you will have an associate profit not necessary that you will have an associate but most of the time when cash flows are given they give this associate profit also so you have to deduct it this you will uh, you will get in your statement of profit and loss investment income deduct finance cost add back you will deduct your interest later but first you have to add it back okay this finance cost whatever you have recorded in your profit and loss account only you are adding back because sometimes finance cost can be changed okay maybe some accrual or prepayment has been have occurred but that adjustments you will be doing at the end okay increase in inventory now come come into your working capital inventory receivable and payable the changes if inventory increases it's a cash outflow deduct receivable increase means customers are not paying you outflow deduct increase in payable means you are taking more longer time to pay your supplier so you are having the cash in hand so it's an inflow not an inflow but you are having the cash with you so increase in payable is an inflow therefore it's in a positive figure without bracket and finally you are getting what is known as cash generated from operations remember two things net cash flow from operating activities and cash generated from operations are not the same thing they are two different things if a question asks you i have seen a question where they asked you to calculate cash generated from operation but what did the students do they deducted interest and tax and found the net cash flow from operation which is not asked and you will not get extra marks also you are wasting time you are wasting time so you have to write this heading there this tight this uh, you have to label it you just cannot leave it empty it is known as cash generated from operation so when do you reach to that stage after deducting doing adjustments deducting your uh, profit and income and adding your expenses and your working capital adjustments inventories payables and receivables after including that then you come to cash generated from operation then you are going to deduct two things interest and tax some adjustments has to be done to this interest and uh, income tax sometimes not all the time sometimes as it is you can take from your profit and loss account sometimes in the statement of financial position you see opening and closing balances are there for interest and income tax you have to make a t account and do that adjustments and i'm sure you know how to do that adjustments right to find the cash paid for income as well as interest because we know whatever goes in the profit and loss account is on a accrual basis we have to find on a cash basis to find on a cash basis we have to make a t account start with opening balance from your statement of financial position for both interest and tax and then closing balance then the amount that went to profit and loss account put it in your t account and the remaining balance is your cash paid the balancing figure right sometimes it's not given if nothing is given in your statement of financial position relating to interest and tax whatever is in your profit and loss account only you can add back sorry deduct now that means finance cost you have deduct added first now you are deducting the same amount only if nothing is there in your statement of financial position income tax you don't do any adjustments you just deduct it and then this is the second which is known as net cash inflow from operating activity so make sure read the question carefully read the requirements carefully what are the examiner asking you cash generated from operation or net cash inflow from operating activity there are two separate things now we are going to the investing activity from operating activity 
remember they will not tell you to write operating investing financing activity and then balance the statement of cash flow no extracts only maybe one part maybe operating activity only maybe just investing activity maybe just financing activity maybe part of operating activity not full operating activity so you have to read the requirements most of the time operating activity so far i have seen okay so here dividend received from associate you have to work it out you have to work it out and it's an inflow interest received any dividend you are receiving from associate comes under investing activity interest received also comes under investing activity you are remember interest paid under operating activities you are deducting but interest received under investing activity you are adding okay now don't ask me the logic and all okay i seriously i don't know the logic but the way it is given you just learn it that way only any non current asset if you are purchasing it cash is going out comes under investing activity outflow selling property that's an inflow the cash that you are receiving under investing activity acquisition of subsidiary when you are acquiring a subsidiary that comes under investing activity net of cash acquired what does it mean whatever the amount that you are buying your subsidiary from that consideration you have to deduct the cash of the subsidiary that means under your assets you will be having cash no from your subsidiary that amount will be given this are the list of assets this are the list of liabilities from there that cash balance you have to deduct from the purchase consideration and take the net okay now we are moving on to so this is known as net cash in investing activity it's an outflow we are coming to financing activity the third section and the last section ordinary share capital okay add repayment of loan deduct because loan you are paying cash is going out dividend paid to nci comes under financing activity deduct you have to do a working over there also to find the dividend paid to nci the t table dividend paid to parent shareholder deduct so both parent shareholder and nci dividend that you have to pay comes under financing activity dividend that you are receiving from associate goes under investing activity okay so the ultimate result is the net cash used in financing activity and finally net cash increase in cash and cash equivalent and you add your opening cash and cash equivalent from your statement of financial position and see whether are you getting the same closing cash and cash equivalent as one that is given in your statement of financial position because they will give you for the two years no opening as well as the closing now cash generated from operations you need to you know some things so this can be presented from in two ways one is indirect the second is direct in the indirect method just now we have come across that that is known as indirect method you start with profit before tax and i do adjustments okay remove the effect of non cash transactions whatever is non cash like depreciation impairment profit expense you deduct you do adjustments or add or deduct and any financing or investing activity you put according to that only direct method means you start with cash received from cash receipt deduct your cash payment to supplier and cash payment to employee so three things are already there but in your exam i haven't i have not seen a direct method to do for calculation purpose they always ask in direct method but yes you have to write a direct method you have to know information about direct method that what could be the advantages of having a direct method and who wants direct method over indirect method a question was asked like this regarding this two method which one is superior or the use or the benefit of the drawbacks of the two methods so you should know that okay for your discussion part you should know the direct method but for calculation it's indirect method accusation and disposal so the figure shown in the statement of cash flow is the net figure of the two items that means the cash spent on the purchase or receive on the sale of the subsidiary you can either buy the subsidiary or you can sell the subsidiary but anything that you are recognizing for the cash that you have received by selling the subsidiary or cash that you have to pay to acquire the subsidiary when you are rec recording it under the investing activity right it is net you are netting it off from your purchase consideration receive or paid minus or add cash balances or overdraft it could be an overdraft also your subsidiary can have an overdraft also so when you are acquiring or disposing you have to it's netted off with your purchase consideration or the disposal 
uh, the proceeds from the disposal for both the disposal and accusation is the same thing you have to net it off not only for accusation okay the impact of subsidiary accusation disposal will need to be factored into your working throughout remember when you have bought a subsidiary or when you have disposed a subsidiary it will have an impact dividends from associate so dividend from associate to find the dividend reconcile the operating and closing balance how do you find the dividend uh, from associate you start with the opening balance of associate and the closing balance of associate in the asso in associate right investment in the associate and reconcile the two figure an example is this this is how you do you start with an associate brought forward then you have to add don't forget to add back the share of profit and oci both profit and oci share you have to add not just the profit or not just the oci which share associates share let's say associate is 30 percent so 30 percent of profit and oci you have to add with the opening balance of associate then purchase of associate how much you have purchased the associate definitely they will give you the cost see cash dividend receive is a balancing figure okay why it's in bracket though the question you can ask is this is a dividend received then why is it in bracket because this is from the associates point of view for associate they are paying you so associate will deduct that dividend but you are receiving that from associate so for you it's an inflow for him it's an outflow that's why he's deducting it comes as a negative figure but it's cash dividend received not paid even if it comes as a bracket don't forget that it's a balancing figure okay disposal of associate if you have a disposal of associate okay this is just a pro forma everything you might be thinking why purchase and disposal together no it's not together sometimes you might have a purchase of associate then only the purchase pass sometimes it's just a disposal if it's a disposal deduct if it's a, if it's a purchase add sometimes you might have two sub uh, associates so if you're having two associate but rarely it happens i have never seen a question where two associates are there two associates are there but let's assume that you have two associates you have to take it separately because the two associate might not have the same percentage of profit and oci you cannot take it together okay let's say one associate you are purchasing the other one you are disposing separately you have to take the two associate same for the subsidiary also is like that associate carried forward this associate carried forward balance will be given to you because then only you will find the balancing figure for cash dividend receive dividends paid to nci this also same way like associate reconcile between the opening and the closing balance and this is also a balancing figure so this is how you start associate brought forward sorry this is dividends paid to associate right uh -huh. i'm sorry uh, i made a mistake dividends paid to nci it is not associate brought forward guys i have i forgot to check that that that's a mistake it's an nci brought forward okay not associate so make that correction over there nci brought forward plus nci on sub accusation if you have acquired sub means subsidiary if you have bought a subsidiary definitely there will be an nci you have to add it nci share of profit and oci that also you have to add less on disposal right it's a balancing figure and carried forward definitely will be given to you the closing balance of nci so cash dividend paid this is you have to pay to the nci that's why it's a cash dividend paid you have to pay to the nci also to the parent but for parent we don't have a separate working okay because you will uh, get that amount that's a balancing figure again so upcoming next that's it for is7 we are going to cover is8 right which is accounting policies estimates and error very important topic again so thank you for watching and see you in the next video